Hi everyone, welcome back to This Book Belongs To Fam. I want to share with you my first time experience going to the Manila International Book Fair as well as everything I got in it. We're just rocking this very at-home look today because yesterday I went to the Manila International Book Fair and I am beat. I am so tired. So we're just gonna go with this. Today I just really want to recap uh, my experience and I want to share with you all the stuff that I got. You can kind of see a peek and I don't want you to see one. I went to the Manila International Book Fair or MIBF with my good friend Pam from Pam Shenanigans. We actually went for two days. So we went on Thursday which is the 12th because we wanted to have a day where we feel like there's not gonna be a lot of people and we can actually shop. <laughs> we can actually go around the aisles and look for books. Pam even prepared this map. So there's like a map of the venue. She printed it out, highlighted all of the booths that we wanted to go to because we don't want to be overwhelmed. It's such a big event, such a big venue. There's like two floors in the SMX Convention Center. So we just knew which places we wanted to go to, what kind of books we wanted to shop for, and we just went for it. So Thursday was a blast. It was really chill. We went to the usual haunts like Fully Book, National Bookstore, and then we went to all of the local publishing houses like Ateneo Press, um, Avenida, Anvil Publishing. We just made our rounds, bought a bunch of books, and called it a day. We didn't get to meet really anyone um, in that day because it's a weekday and we kind of expected that which is why we decided to go for a second day yesterday, Sunday, which is the last day of the book fair and oh my gosh there were so many people. <laughs> I'm so happy that we did all of our shopping on Thursday because it was impossible no, scratch that. It was difficult but not impossible <laughs> to shop on that day because there's just so many people you're gonna have to like shimmy around everyone just trying to get a look at the books and it's hot and it's so crowded and I hate crowds so it was a it was a journey that day but yesterday what made it really really fun was we got to meet a lot of our bookish friends people that I've been talking to online for the past two or three years and this is the first time that I'm seeing them in the flesh. Putting faces, like real faces to names, such a good feeling. And I'm so happy that I got to meet them. And I just know, I just really love being part of this book community. And it's really inspiring to see a lot of local content creators really pushing for Filipino literature and being advocates for our local publishers, for our local authors, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun meeting people who love books as much as you do and are not gonna judge you for the amount of books that you buy in one day. Anyway, with that said, are you ready for a book haul? Because I am. <laughs> Mostly because I just really want to shelve them already and I can't do that until I do the book haul, scan them into my story graph and all. Um, so I want to share with you all the books that I got. It's kind of like mixed. I'm not going to separate it into like what days I got them and whatever. I'm going to try and talk first about books that are not by Filipino authors because I really did a good job at buying a lot of Filipino authored books, which I'm very proud of. So I want to start with the non-Filipino authored books. Um, and then go from there. I'm gonna try and go by, like, by author and by publisher um, just to have some semblance of organization in this haul. Um, but yeah, let's dive right in. I might need to like let go of my sword mic right here because I can't hold the books. But anyway, let's start the book haul. I'm not gonna talk to you about like the synopsis of the book and whatnot. I'm just gonna share why I got it. I'll talk more about these books when I actually get to reading them. So one of the books that I got is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This has been very, very popular in booktube, bookstagram, book talk everywhere and I haven't read it and I heard that it's like a really weird fantasy where you know things aren't very linear the narrator is quite vague and those are things that I like and also I know that a lot of people love this book Kat from Kat and Angelico absolutely recommends this one which is why I got it so that's the first book for our haul the next one is A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. King Fisher this is 
I think the King Fisher's latest release. I'm not sure if it's the latest latest, but it was released August of 2024. So it's pretty recent. And I've had this on my wish list on Amazon for a while. I didn't realize that the paperback was already available. So got that. I absolutely love this cover. I think they redid a bunch of the King Fisher's books into this style. Um, I really like it. So yeah, I got that one. Very excited. I love T. Kingfisher. Um, what Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I gave that five stars. So yeah, very excited for this one. The next one is a book that I've been seeing for quite some time. And it's also part of the 100 best books of the 21st century thing that the New York Times did. And it's Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I love this cover so much. I love the colors. It kind of reminds me of Twile. Twile? Twile? That fabric. <laughs> I love it so much. And this is a thick boy. Like, it's tiny, the font. But I don't know actually what this is about. Demon Copperhead speaks for a new generation of lost boys and all those born into beautiful, cursed places they can't imagine leaving behind. So yeah, got that one. Excited to read this. I don't know when, but at some point in my lifetime <laughs> the next one i'm very very excited about because i have been collecting this um, manga series it's one of my favorite manga series of all time and honestly i've never read the manga i've only watched the anime adaptation but i love it so much i wanted to collect this manga and then read them all in one go and that is Full Metal Alchemist. So this is the Full Metal Edition, which is the edition that I am collecting. I currently have, I'm looking at the top with all of my manga. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the 10th one and it's the 18th volume. I only have like one to six, is it 10, 14, and 16? So I have like random volumes and I just buy it whenever i see a volume that i don't have yet so uh, luckily this one was in fully booked so i got it for like a really good discount so yeah that is one of the books that i got another one in the manga genre my first ever junji ito I have been wanting to read Junji Ito for such a long time. This was actually on my priority list because I have been so curious about this book and it's a tome. It's so thick and it's one of, I guess, Junji Ito's most popular works and I thought if I were to start on Junji Ito, what better way to start it with than Tomie. I've heard some really good reviews about this one. Everyone seems to love it. And this is quite expensive, this edition. So I made sure to like look for it. It's also in my priority because I wanted to get it on a discount. And I did. So I'm so happy about that one. It's so thick though. So thick. Okay, the next set of books are also by non-Filipino authors, but um, I guess there's a theme here. They're all romance. <laughs> so the first one is The Ex Vows by Jessica Joyce. I have been hearing this all over booktube and I think this is a new release. Um, I think this was released this year actually. Yeah, 2024. I don't know which month, but yeah, this is a pretty new release. I've heard pretty good things about it. It's like second chance romance if I'm... Um, remembering that correctly and I usually like second chance romance um hello happy place anyway so I got the x files by Jessica Joyce and then I also got Nora Goes Off Script by Annabelle Monaghan and I have been hearing so many good things about this and I really like the premise and I think our um, main character is in her mid-30s or something like that I haven't read a lot of romance that feature uh, women in their 30s usually it's like early 20s sometimes even earlier and me being in my 30s I want to read more of that because I feel like I could relate more to their concerns and whatever their issues are so yeah I got Nora Goes off script I've heard so many good things about this I'm very excited another romance that I got is out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. I also have been hearing good things about this. It has a trope that I don't particularly love. Um, it's not a spoiler, it's on the back of the book. It has accidental pregnancy, but a lot of the people that I also know don't like accidental pregnancy said it was done really well here and they really liked it. So I got curious, curious and you also get a male lead with a prosthetic uh, leg. So it has a lot of like representation as well. I hope that it's good, uh, but I have heard nothing but good things about this one. So yeah, I got it. Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. 
And then the last three romance books that I got, is it the last three? Yeah, the last three romance books that I got, at least that are not by Filipino authors, is kind of like a trilogy. I'm not sure if it's like a strict trilogy, but um, people say that you kind of read them one after the other, and that is Abby Jimenez Part of Your World series. I don't know what the name of the series is, um, but I got Part of Your World, Yours Truly, and Just for the Summer. I really want to get onto the Abby Jimenez train and I think this is the best way to start. I also like how fun these covers are. They're kind of like they're matching in a way but they're not exactly the same which I enjoy. I'm gonna have an Abby Jimenez moment um, at some point in the future. So excited for this one. Abby Jimenez, I'm coming for you. I also got Funny Story, which is also romance. I'm putting my trust in Emily Henry and the fact that I really loved Happy Place. Like, Happy Place was a five-star read for me. So I'm hoping that I also like Funny Story. And I don't know, I'm really excited to read more Emily Henry. I like her writing style. And even though I didn't love book lovers, I truly, truly enjoyed Happy Place. So I am so keen in giving her another try. And then another book that I got is, I think it's a fantasy book with a little bit of romance in it. It's Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. What I've heard about this is that it's kind of like Bridgerton-esque vibes. And I haven't really read a lot of like Regency, I don't know if that's the right term, era books. But I have read very good things about this from people that I trust on the book community so yeah very excited to read this one i know that there's like a sequel to it i think it's like 10,000 stitches or something like that but um i want to give the first one a try first and then lastly not really romance but literary fiction i got blue sisters by coco melors i went back and forth about getting this book because i haven't really read anything by coco melors i just love her covers like cleopatra frankenstein's cover is so good in my opinion and this has sort of the similar art style and i don't know um it's talking about sisters i have two sisters so i thought maybe i could relate a little bit to this one um and i just wanted to give coco millers a try so yeah i got blue sisters now we are moving on to books by philippine authors i'm gonna start first with a book by a filipino american author it's a fantasy novel called saints of storm and sorrow I just saw this in my Instagram explore page and all I know of this is that it's a fantasy story using Filipino mythology and I really love that. So I am really excited about this one. It was also blurred by K.S. Villosa's The Wolf of Oren Yaro, which I haven't read but more on that later. Um, but yeah, very curious about this. The sequel I think is gonna come out pretty soon as well. Um, so what better time to read this than now? So yeah, I have that one. It's by Gabrielle Buba. Our next set of books are all published by Penguin Random House Southeast Asia. They have a bunch of books that are very, very interesting. A lot of their authors were also in the book fair for book signings, which was pretty cool. I was able to meet one of them, so I'll talk more about that later. So the first one that I got is a duology, or I'm not sure if it's just a duology, but I got Winds of War and Veins of Power by Mika De Leon. So this is the first book and this is the second book. All I know is that it's fantasy and it's also inspired by Filipino mythology. So there's like a trend here. I want to read more fantasies inspired by Filipino folklore, Filipino mythology, Filipino culture because our culture is so interesting, it's so rich, and I just want to read more worlds inspired by that um so yeah i got that one very excited for this one i also got um the power above us all by ronaldo vivo jr i actually also got the original tagalog version of this which i'll talk about later this is the english translated version i just wanted to sort of compare <laughs> and this has been promoted kind of like as a gone girl vibe kind of book so i'm very very curious about that um but yeah the power above us all is translated by carl r de mesa the next one i got is kind of special because i did meet the author um yesterday so i got hui city by 
Claire Betita de Guzman. Uh, I was actually looking for this book on Sunday, but it was actually, it was sold out. Kat from Cat on Angelico introduced me to the author because she's part of the street team for this book. And I got to meet the author. She's so nice. She's so bubbly. I love her outfits. Always very, very colorful. And this is her latest book. And I was able to get one of her books, which I'm so happy about. She was also so kind and gave me a bag full of like swag um look at this tote bag very very cute inside you get a bunch of bookmarks and then you also get a bunch of like cool notepads so there is this notebook and then you've got the two writing pads or like notepads with the book at the bottom so very very cute that was like a fun experience so i'm definitely excited to read the Hue city and this is like a literary fiction where like there's like different lives converging into one and those kinds of stories are always something that i love reading about so yeah very excited about this one and then the last book that i got that is published by penguin random house is a book that i have been looking for i initially went on thursday looking for this book and i couldn't find it but apparently the shipment was delayed so when i went back on sunday this was my first priority to find because i did not want to run out of stock and that is ascension by eliza victoria so this is a horror novel eliza victoria is kind of known as this fantasy horror type of writer and i've never read anything by her but my good friends pam from pam shenanigans cat cat and angelico like highly recommend her books to me in fact i also got another book which i'll talk about in a bit um but this is her latest release and i'm so excited like i am trying to get more into the horror thriller genre and i thought having one from a filipino author is just you know chef's kiss now the next book is also by eliza victoria and this is highly recommended and that is dwellers so i heard about this from pam pam shenanigans and it's essentially like people having the ability to jump into another person's body but then i think one of the persons that they jump into is like a killer or something like that i don't know very intrigued about that this was not published by penguin it's by total publishing um but it's also by eliza victoria yeah and this cover i i love this cover um so yeah that is all the books that I got from Penguin and all the books that I got by Eliza Victoria. The next set of books is by Anvil Publishing. I got Desaparecidos by Luel Hati Bautista. I read The Cada Setenta by the same author and I love that. And Luel Hati Bautista is just a very well-known writer specifically for books that speak to society, speak to like politics, but in a fiction setting. Um, so yeah, I know that this will be hard-hitting and I can't wait to read it and probably cry. Um, but yeah, that is Desaparecidos by Luel Hati Bautista. The next one that I got is Sique Hor by Yvette Tan. I love that book title because there's a place in the Philippines called Sique Hor and it's kind of known for witches and stuff like that um and this is a horror anthology if i'm not mistaken i'm so excited for this especially because i'm also going to siki horror next year so i might be bringing this one for a cool reading moment so yeah that is siki horror by yvette tan she also has another book like waking the dead i believe and i didn't get that yet i wanted to try this one first but yeah super excited for this one and then I went to Avenida and I got a bunch of books that I have been highly anticipating. So the first one is book one and book three of the Dreamland trilogy. Is that what it's called? Dreamland? I forget the name of the trilogy. Um, but I got the first book because I thought the one that I have, which is Ang Bangin Sa Ilalim, no, something mga pa. <laughs> I got this one because apparently the one that I had was not the first book. I almost read it for last month, but it, it was book two. This is book one, which is the second edition. And then this is book three. Um, so this is Ang Kapangyarihan Higit Sa Ating Lahat, which is the original of this one. So this is the English translation. This is the original Filipino book. Um, and then this is the third book, Ang Suklam Sa Ating Naaagnas Na Balat. Yeah, I have no idea what this is about. I think it has to do with like corruption. It's a little bit of like a fantasy, a little bit of a horror thriller vibe. So I'm very excited to binge read the series. So yeah, I also love how bright these colors are. The second book is a black. I'm gonna try and see if I can get it. 
this is the second book. Ang bangin sa ilalim ng ating mga paa. So this is how they look like all together, which I am kind of obsessed with. I love that. I love how they look all together. Those are the first two books that I got from Avenida. And then I also got, I think this is the last book that I bought for the entire book fair. I got The Vanish by Chuck Berry Pascual. I actually also met the author. He was also signing books in there. So this is actually signed by him, which is pretty, pretty cool. I've never really went to a book signing before. So I got two books signed. Actually, I didn't show you the first one. I, of course, got Huey City signed since I did meet the author I got that sign as well um, but yeah this is also another book that is an English translation so the original Filipino book is Ang Mga Nawawala or Ang Nawawala and I haven't read that um, and it wasn't available as well so yeah I just have the English book and then there's a sequel to it but it's only in Tagalog right now I just love that I now have so many Filipino books that I can like pick from when I do my TBR so yeah very excited about that um, and then a couple of um, books that I also got from other publishers. I also went to Ateneo Press. I recently bought a couple of books from Ateneo Press. So I wasn't actually really looking for anything. Um, but I did see The Age of Umbridge by Jessica Savra. And I was so curious about this one. Mostly because I really love the cover. It's also a very thin book. I don't know what it's about. But I have seen a lot of people reading this. Like the people in my community. So I thought I could give this a try. And then in Mill Flores Publishing, I got So Heaven by Isagani R. Cruz. This is a new release and I saw this on Instagram and I have been very, very curious about this because it's kind of like paranormal romance. Yeah, a riotous romantic romp in the ideal afterlife of a book lover. I love that one-liner. So I got this one, very excited about this. And then a very, very special book that I got, which was actually one of the harder books to get because it got sold out on the first day that I went, is none other than Ipinanganak Akong Bakla at Ilang Pang Mga Akda by Gerald Gruezo, or better known as Gerald the Bookworm, here on YouTube, on Instagram, everywhere. And this is his second... That is my dishwasher. Please hold. I got this from Balangay Publishing. I believe this is his second published book. And I'm just so excited because, I mean, I am friends with Gerald. So it's super exciting to see him follow his dreams of becoming an author and having a published short story, like, chapbook. So cool. And, of course, he did some signing. And this is how he signs his book. So iconic. I love it. So, yeah, I'm excited to read this one. And congratulations again, Gerald, if you're watching this video. The last couple of books that I'm going to talk about are graphic novels. So the first one is Lucia Dreaming by Lucia Azul. Is that right? Is the name of the author also Lucia? I, yeah, Lucia as well, because this is a graphic novel inspired by her own dreams. So that's why I guess it's called Lucia Dreaming. This is by Anina Comics. And I love the art style of this one. I love, I love, love, love it so much. I'm so excited to read this. This has been on my wish list ever since it came out. This is a new release. So yeah, very excited about that. I also got like a free planner pad thingy when I bought this one, which is super cool as well and lastly one that i've been very very curious about ever since i saw this on a bunch of other people's um reels um i saw this on gerald on cat on side engineers readings reels and i was like i had fomo and i saw the art style and like i want to get that and it's mahardika by rexy dorado and john ray so rexy is a writer and john ray is the artist and I love the art style of this one. This is the first volume, so it has issues 1 to 5. And it also came with this kind of bookmark or, yeah, kind of like a card. And I believe it's also available online, but obviously I want the printed copy. It's a Filipino graphic novel, so very excited about that. I love this one. I love the shading style, specifically. Um, so yeah, I have this. Can't wait to read this. I think the next volume is gonna come out soon-ish, like this year. So I hope I can get my hands on that as well. Um, but yeah, I have Maharlika. And that is, I don't even know where to put this. That is the final book that I got. I did get a couple of free things. So in the same place where I bought Maharlika, which was at Comic Kit, 
I also got the Cometverse 2024 edition. So this is just an anthology of a bunch of different comics from creators in the comic at universe if you will um and i have actually been to comic at the actual convention a couple of times and it's a great way to discover artists and you know support their work um and yeah i got this for free and then another one that i got from national bookstore is in an issue of a comic which is this one super crooks those are all of the books that i got like books that I bought from the Manila International Book Fair but I also got one book that I borrowed from Pam which is The Wolf of Oren Yarrow and then she also gave me this cute crochet bookmarks isn't that so adorable she made it herself I need to like put them inside a heavy book so they can flatten but yeah, those are everything everything that i got from manila international book fair i had so much fun and i'm so excited to put this all in their respective places in my shelves yeah this is just such a great first experience and i'm definitely gonna be going to the next one and i hope i'll see you there thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video i will see you in the next one bye